Everybody keeps asking me how I have over a million domains on my Pi-hole block list. When I showed off my dashboard in some of my previous Pi-hole videos, many of you spotted that number and wanted to do the same. And you asked, how do you have over a million domains on your block list? Well, it's easy. I use the list of curated sites and I'll show you how. So the first thing you'll need to do is like and subscribe this video. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, really. Well, not really, but it really helps the algorithm. <clears throat> Okay, so really, the real first thing you'll need to do is make sure you have Pi-hole up and running. Now you can see on this default install, we don't have very many block lists, relatively speaking. We have about 80,000. And that's a good start, but it doesn't block a large majority of the things that you'd like to block. So here's how we add some more. You might think to go in settings. It is not in settings. I do this every single time. It's actually in group management. And then under group management, it's under add lists. And you can see here, we have one list added. So this is the one list where we get the 80, 81,000 block lists that we have today on the default install. Now, we wanna add more lists here. And where do we get them? And we get them from this site called Firebob. Now, I stumbled on this a while ago on Reddit and thought it was a pretty good list. And this site is full of block lists maintained by different communities and it's updated regularly. And I've had a lot of success with these and I'll share which ones with you I usually turn on. So first of all, if you look at this list, it's broken up into categories. So first of all, we have the suspicious list. Now these are domains that are kind of suspicious or doing nefarious things or doing unknown things. And so they're grouped in this category called suspicious. Then we have the advertising list and this is pretty obvious. This is a list of advertisers. Most of the domains in these lists focus on serving up advertisements. Then we have the tracking and telemetry lists. This is doing exactly what you think it's doing, tracking and telemetry. But these are primarily used for metrics and telemetry and, and tracking people, if you will. Then we have the malicious list. Now these lists are full of domains that have malicious activity, malware, spyware, viruses, and you name it. And these are things you absolutely do not want coming through your firewall, like most of these. And then we have our other list, which these are just a miscellaneous or a junk drawer list of items that didn't fall into the other categories. But if you notice within these lists, we actually have some icons. So what do these icons mean? Well, the green icon means that these are generally okay to turn on in your environment. And you should be able to browse the web as if you didn't have them on at all, except for it's doing the blocking for you. So it won't interfere with your normal day-to-day -day browsing activities. So these are generally safe to turn on. The blue ones I found are okay too. I've turned these on and I've noticed that it has very little impact on my day-to-day -day browsing. I feel like these are generally safe to turn on too. And then you have the ones with the X and the line through them. And these are pretty much a no-go for me. Now these sites are not recommended because they have too many false positives, they're not being maintained or they're deprecated or they're biased in some way or another. Now, I'm not the one that says they're biased, it says right here in their documentation, but I trust that this author has done their research. So, their words, not mine. And so, for me, and to get to a million block lists, we're gonna add all of the ones in green, and most of the ones in blue, and then we should be pretty well protected. So, how do we do that? So the way that we do that is that we copy this block list, and these block lists are just a list of rules of domains, and we apply them to Pi-hole in the add list group management section. And so let's copy this one, the first one on a suspicious list. We'll paste it into the address section and we'll add a comment. So most of the time I just add a comment like Firebog. So if I ever need to go through these again and say, hey, which ones came from Firebog? I can filter based on this comment and see them all. So we'll add this one with the Firebog comment. And now that we've added them all, we should have quite a few in our list. But first, a warning. Now, I know that adding over a million block lists to your pie hole sounds like a good thing. Because why wouldn't you want to block things that are bad? Bad things are on a sliding scale. Some people may consider tracking within an application tracking or bad. And so those things might be added to this block list. But you might find that you're not able to use that app or that website anymore. And so this all boils down to how you want to manage your pie hole. Now, the sensible approach is to block things as needed. 
but you end up spending more time looking at logs in your audit list and blocking things to get to a good state. But if you take the opposite approach, which is this way, adding a million block lists, you're gonna spend a lot of time now debugging why sites won't work and adding them to your allow list. So before toggling all of these on and enabling that, just know that you might be doing a little bit of debugging if things don't work. And so if you're more comfortable with blocking things as they come up, this might not be a good solution for you. It's good to try, uh, but it's easy enough to back out and turn these off. But if you want to go all in with block lists, go this route and then debug why sites won't work. So anyways, there's my disclaimer. Let's make sure that all of these are enabled and they are. And then we'll go to tools and we'll say update gravity. So this is going to update our block lists. And this should happen on a regular basis. So we're going to update all of our block lists. So it's pulling all of those down and then it's going to add them to our pie hole rule set. And then you'll see a success message and you can see it added and extracted a lot of these domains, analyzed them and then merged them into our master set. And then if we go to dashboard, we have over 3 million. Now that's 3x what I told you you were going to get. So hopefully you give this video a thumbs up and then hopefully that prompts you to subscribe too. Uh, but back to what I was saying, just because we have now 3 million block lists on our pie hole domain block lists does not mean that we're going to spend less time debugging problems. And if we go back into our ad lists, there were a few that I probably wouldn't turn on, not because I don't think they're not good, just because I want to use some of those services. And you might end up going through here and toggling some of these off. One, for instance, was the Facebook one. If you use Facebook or anyone in your home uses Facebook, you'll most likely have to turn that one off. But if you don't use Facebook or you don't want anyone using Facebook, that's a good one to keep on. But in order to debug these or to troubleshoot these, you'll end up spending a lot of your time in this audit log. So as you're making queries, it's going to show you ones that are allowed and then it's going to show you ones that are blocked. For example, in my own Pi-hole server, you can see ones that are allowed here and ones that are blocked. And so you're going to spend a lot of your time here. And since we have a lot of block lists here, you're going to spend most of your time debugging the blocked queries. You can see the ones on the right are ones that just came with lists and I haven't yet unblocked them. But if I wanted to, I would check the whitelist option or the allow list option. And the same goes for allowed queries. If you didn't enable all of these block lists, you would end up spending most of your time in the allow queries. So which ones do you want to allow? And if you wanted to allow one that was getting blocked, you would just click the blacklist button or the allow button. And then the other place you're going to spend a lot of time debugging these lists is in your tail of your pie hole log. And so as your home is making DNS requests, you'll see them populate here. And in here, you'll see whether they were allowed or whether they were blocked. And so if you get to this point, you find a domain you want to add to your allow list, you would copy and paste that site and go into the whitelist section or the allow list section. And you would add that domain you want to allow. So let's say, for instance, talking about Facebook, if you wanted to allow Facebook, you would just add the domain here, facebook.com, and then add a comment, whatever you like. And then you would add that to your allow list. And then once that's added, now everybody in your home can now get back to Facebook. And the same goes for the blacklist or the blacklist section. If some domain on that list wasn't covered, although you have three and a half million, you would add that domain here. And then add a comment to it as well. And so if you wanted to add Facebook to the blacklist, you would add it to your blacklist and now it works. And now I have no idea what will happen because we have Facebook on the allow and the blacklist, but Anyway, and so that's how I have over a million domains on my Pi-hole server. You can see here we have 3.4 million, but I bet it would be pretty painful to do normal internet stuff, normal internet stuff, just your day-to-day -day browsing with 3.5 million turned on. Uh, but give it a shot. So let me know. How many block lists do you have in your Pi-hole block lists? Do you have more than the million that I have? Are you gonna try it? with 3.5 million? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Dude, thanks for the sub, appreciate it.
I know I, I say dude a lot, so I, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I lude brought it up, but I, I, I realized too, when he called it out, I'm like, man, if he's saying uh, I say it a lot, then I, I do. And I, it's just something growing up. It was always dude or man. And it's sometimes you mix them up and you're like, dude, man, dude, really, really dude, man. <laughs> Anyways.